Calvin Helmholtz instability can occur when there is shear in a single continuous fluid or a velocity difference across the interface of two fluids of different densities. An example includes wind blowing over water and clouds. They also appear in Saturn's bands and can be seen in Van Gogh's Starry Night painting. Starting with the case of two fluids of different densities, an interface arises because of the fact that these fluids have different densities. In the demo to come, the fluids in the tank initially start at rest. The tank is then tipped so that the heavier fluid with density rho 2 travels down and the lighter fluid with density rho 1 travels up. Shear is now present in the fluid, which leads to a transfer of momentum and waves start to form at the interface of the two layers. Over time, these waves continue to grow since the shear between the two layers is still present. The shear starts to induce vorticity at the interface and the fluids begin to become more unstable with time. The waves become large enough that the velocity field present causes the waves to start to break. This leads to internal breaking waves, which quickly dampens and causes turbulent mixing between the two layers. Now looking at what causes this instability in waves mathematically, I'll start with the Navier-Stokes equation for an inviscous fluid, which includes the nonlinear pressure and gravity terms. This flow is also irrotational, so the velocity can be expressed as a scalar field. Also, because of the irrotational flow, the advection term can be written um, as one half the gradient of the velocity squared because the curl of the velocity is zero. Integrating this form of the Navier-Stokes equation gives the time-dependent Bernoulli equation. The solution for h, phi1, and phi2 can be expressed as e to the i k x plus s t in order to find the condition first instability. Solving the time-dependent Bernoulli equation gives the velocity of the lighter uh, fluid minus the velocity of the heavier fluid squared, which is greater than gravity times the density of the heavier fluid squared minus the lighter fluid squared, and all over k times the densities, where k is the wave number. For this condition to be satisfied, u1 must not equal u2, and k needs to be large. This means that the wavelength of the waves must be small, implying a larger growth rate. Now let's look at a demonstration of the Kelvin-Hemholtz instability waves.